talking about isotopes and isotopic mass and how all isotopic masses are whole numbers and how every element might have one or more isotopes. And those are great. That's awesome for using isotopes. But what do we want to do when we just want to use one number for an atomic mass on the periodic table? We want an easy way of representing it. What we use then is an average atomic mass. Now, an average weight is very different than an average. So when we're talking about the average atomic mass, it's not adding up all the atomic masses and then dividing by the number. That would just be a straight average having everything be the same amount of weight. But what would happen, it wouldn't be fair if 99% of an element is one weight and then 1% of an element is another weight, it wouldn't equal out. So what we use when calculating the average atomic mass is a weighted average of all the isotopes for a specific element. That is the atomic mass used on the periodic table. That is why on all periodic tables, there's slightly different atomic masses on one periodic table. Oxygen might be 15.99, another might be 16. Um, hydrogen might be one or 1.008 or 1.009. They're slightly different because you're gonna be rounding differently. And don't worry, I'll tell you where to round. That is when we're discussing significant figures, um, different periodic tables take into account different significant figures. So let's talk about it. I'm gonna walk you through the step-by-step -step weighted average, weighted atomic mass for silicon. So you have to be provided two things. You gotta be provided the isotope mass. So here we have silicon 28, silicon 29, and silicon 30. And you have to be provided the occurrence rate. So silicon 28 occurs 92.2% of the time. Silicon 29 occurs 4.7% of the time. And silicon 30 occurs 3.1% of the time. You have to be provided these two items for everything. Otherwise, you just simply cannot do the weighted average for an atomic mass. So then what the first step is, step one, you're gonna convert your percent to decimal. And that formula is percent divided by 100. So you take your occurrence rate and you divide it by 100. So 92.2 divided by 100 gives you 0.922. Silicon 29 occurs 4.7% of the time. So 4.7 divided by 100 gives you 0.047. Silicon 30 is, happens 3.1% of the time. So 3.1 divided by 100 gives you 0.031. That's always your step one, is to convert your percent to decimal. Then we're gonna move on to step two. Step two is to multiply the isotope mass by the decimal. The formula for that is isotope mass times decimal occurrence decimal. So for silicon 28, the mass is 28. The occurrence decimal is 0 0.922. So 28 times 0 0.922 gives you 25.82. For silicon 29, the occurrence decimal is 0 0.047. So 29 times 0 0.047 gives you 1.36. For silicon 30, your occurrence decimal is 0.031. So 30 times 0.031 gives you 2.29. And remember, this occurrence decimal was your percentage divided by 100. Okay, now we're gonna talk about step three because this is a three-step process. Step three is to add the weighted isotope masses together. So for, remember we did all this work. So we converted your, your occurrence percent to decimal. You multiplied it across with your mass to find your weighted mass. 
Then you're adding them together. So 25.82 plus 1.36 plus 2.29 gives you an weighted average for silicon of 29.47 grams per mole. Now remember, we can either have AMUs, which is atomic mass unit, or grams per mole. Um, and for this class, we're going to assume grams per mole unless AMU is specifically provided as a unit. Do not forget to add units unless it tells you not to add units. Okay, what we are going to do now is you're going to try one of these by yourself and I'm gonna walk you through it. So I would like you to walk along with me how to do this before we do our guided practice. So this might be what you provided. I want you to find the atomic, average atomic mass of iron given iron 54 occurs 5.9% of the time, iron 56 occurs 91.7% of the time, and iron 57 occurs 2.1% of the time. You will not always be given it in a table format. Oftentimes you'll be given it in a word problem format. So what you need to be able to do at the very first is create this table. And I'm gonna show you the full table you're gonna to need to create. Let me know when you have this part of the table written down and I can do the next step with you. Okay, once you have this start of your table started, the first thing you can do is make a, make a column for your occurrence decimal. So you can just add another column, make it for your occurrence decimal. And then you have all the work ready to go. So you, you can just, I'm just gonna throw in an annotation here. Remember this is just divided by a hundred. So if you think about it this way, 5.9 divided by 100 gives you 0 0.059. You don't have to necessarily show all your work or do it in a completely different step. You can make each step its own column. So FE56 is 91.7% divided by 100 gives me an occurrence decibel of 0.917. 2.1% for 57 divided by 100 gives me an occurrence decimal of 0 0.021. So now we have the first kind of step or two done. We have our occurrence decimal. We have our occurrence mass. We know our isotopic elements. Now what we have to do is multiply your isotopic mass by your occurrence decimal. And look, all the information you need is right here. So 54 times 0 0.059 gives you 3.186. 56 times 0 0.917 gives you 51.35. 57 times 0 0.021 gives you 1.197. So now you have your average masses and you have a, you've done it all in one step. Now you can add a step down below because you're just going to add these together. You're gonna to do a plus here and a plus here. So you can kind of write it in right on your table. So you can do this all in one step. So 3.186 plus 51.35 plus 1.197. And then you get 55.73 grams per mole. That's what you've calculated. Now, I view grams per mole because no one said AMU. If they say AMU, you would write AMU. And then we can compare it to the average atomic mass on the periodic table. So on the periodic table, the one, at least the one I use, is 55.85 grams per mole. It's very close and it's gonna difference you to a rounding error, more precise measurements significant figures, but you can see how close doing the average mass is.